very pure slumber. The snuggle boy. So is it? Is, is that it? I assume because you can hit end stream, so it must mean that it is currently streaming, right? It said live in the little corner. That's exactly, now. exactly what we need. What? Uh, just like a million of these stupid little things going ham. Cool. Yay. So glad that life is worth living and stuff. Hi. Hi. It's been a rough day. It's only freaking Monday. I'm sorry, baby. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, echoes, echoes, echoes. Okay, less echoes. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, more JavaScript. So. Let's, uh. Probably change colors. Yes, we found our colors. We did find our colors. They are here. Uh, open to interpretation, I guess, but colors there. Um, and then we're going to have like an actual countdown to Instead of a time. Random numbers that we don't understand. Yeah, so we'll have a countdown to, I think, a date. We'll mm -hmm. give it like a, ooh, we could maybe find a date picker. That sounds like way too much work. Yeah, no, screw that. We'll, we'll hard code, like, a date, like, September, you know, 22nd, 2020, or whatever. Okay. And have it count down to... That date. Yep. So, we'll start there. We'll see where we end up. Who knows where this journey will take us today on the stream. So, handing the keyboard off. And maybe one of these days I will uh, force you to learn Vim because I still don't know how to use Vim. And then you wouldn't need a mouse, you just need a keyboard. But that's a, what that's is a Vim? hard, hard nerd. It's a text editor that doesn't use a mouse. It just only uses keys. Okay. Yeah. There's some good reasons to learn it. It has quite the learning cliff but once you can get it there's so many cool things you can do and in, if you know what you're doing it's just kind of wild to watch somebody who really knows what they're doing so That's cool. what is this uh that is the file you're looking at what's this so that files this this files that so this is showing you that you can only see that much of the file so if you have these big uh, long files you can see oh i'm about halfway through the file okay so that is a miniature version of this yep all right, cool beans. What am I doing? Um, so, oh, hey, look, we already set that whole date thing because, like, we were smart or something, I oh. guess. Um, it's been a few days. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have some get element by IDs. We're setting some stuff and things. All the stuff and things. I, uh, set demo. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, how about we get rid of lines 30 through 37? Because they're just kind of in the way. And actually, go all the way down to, the, to uh, so I need down this. to 42. We'll leave the robot. Yeah, right there. So what is, oh, that's the... Okay. Yep, and Don't then delete. It. Clean it up, save. And then Alt-Tab to refresh. Cool. Oh, uh, we killed the robot. Mm. Almost cool for half a second until we murdered our robot. Oh, we got rid of our closing tag. Do a div closing tag. 
these. So, is it, yep, go there. Yep. Cool. Uh, let's get rid of line 33 and 34 as well because that was all CSS classy stuff. This? Mm -hmm. Dead body. That body should be right there. Perfect. Okay. So I'll save that. Let's go back. We should still have a robot with the time. Go team fun. Okay, so I'm sure there's libraries around this, but that sounds like wussy job. So what we're going to do is some math. <laughs> so. Okay. You mean for the date? Yeah. For our countdown? Yep. So if we go back to... Yep, here. Let's, uh, so, let's create a function, a new function. Where? Um, above line six. So, so this is going to do our date formatting stuff. So we could call it uh, date formatter. That. Or let's call it, uh, Epoch to date. This e probably exists somewhere. EPOC? Uh, EPCOCH, lowercase e. EPOCH. Epoch. Uh, epoch to date. I'm fairly certain there's a function somewhere in the date library that does this, but yeah, it sounds like too much work. So, uh, also learning how to kind of figure things out and do them yourself is usually a good idea, but if you're trying to do this in production, like, just use the function available to you. I'm assuming you're um, doing that. Yep. But we're going to pass in a date. So and by pass in, you mean type on this line, or? No. So remember the curly boys? Yeah, inside inside the curly boys. Okay, I put curly boys, though. Uh, curvy boys. Sorry. Curvy boys. Inside these curvy boys? Yep. Inside the curvy boys, type date. Cap or not? Uh, not. Okay. Uh, nope. It fixed, it tried to fix it for you, but it made it worse. Okay. Mm. And then on line seven, um, we're going to talk about a return value. So, um, functions right now, our set demo function just does stuff. So basically, if I am the program, I say, you are my function, go do stuff. And I just kind of expect you to do stuff. And the stuff are the variables or what? It, the variables and the like, the get element by ID. Okay. So Tells what we're what going to do, to do now is I'm going to say, you know, I have a date. Mm -hmm. Here, I want you to do something to it and hand it back to me. Okay. That's what a return value is. is you know, I want you to hand something back to me, whether that be, you know, most languages support one return value, but you can more or less always hand back an array or an object of things. And so you just, I want you to hand stuff back to me when you're done doing your thing. Okay. okay. So to do that, we just return date. The word return date? Yep. One word? Re uh, return space date. So, right now this function is, hey, here's this thing. Hand that exact same thing back to me. Super okay. useful. So yeah, we'll we'll just we'll start there. Uh, so on line twelve, um, what we're gonna hand them is the date, which is the time to wedding. So instead of trying to uh, set the inner HTML to time to wedding, we're going to set the inner HTML to the return value of epoch to date. Okay, so instead of us doing line 10, which is I want a date, line 11 does some math to say how much time until okay. wedding date, and then line 12 says set the div with the class name of demo, or ID of demo, to the time to the wedding. 
So, so what we're going to do is say, instead of setting it to some variable, we want you to set it to the return value of a function. Okay. Um, if actually, let's do this first. Uh, do another line after 11, just below, yep, yeah, there, and say var formatted date, formatted. Two Ds. Uh, sure, I mean, as long, uh, nope, all one word, capital D, eight, equal, um, you got an extra A in there, equals epoch to date. No, it's tab, H, tab. Okay, and then curvy boy, time to wedding. Okay, is time to wedding, okay. Right time to wedding is the variable that we declared the line above. Yeah, I just, I never know if I'm capitalizing things because I don't I have to find it in our thing and remember what I typed. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why text editors are kind of important is because it'll help uh, us see things. Like, it'll help you find those things. Also, you've been doing, like, your variables a little bass backwards, and I guess I was drunk last time and didn't care, but I guess I'm more persnickety today than I care. <laughs> okay. So, that being said... On line 13, change formatted date, or change time to wedding to formatted date. Okay. Now if we save that, we go back to the browser and hit refresh. It's going to do the same thing that we just did. But now it's using a function, so it's cool. <laughs> so we can go back to the, yep, code. And then we're going to start doing some math on the uh, epochs. So the epoch, remember, is this big, long, basically, time from 1970 till now. We have uh, the difference, so we know what today is. We just need to break out uh, how many, like, you know, seconds, minutes, hours, days, you know, however many. So to do that we're going to use something called the modulus. Uh, do you remember your long division? Vaguely, yes. So, whole point of long division is you don't divide things in, like, they don't always come out cleanly, right? Mm -hmm. You have remainders? Yep. So, a modulus is just give me the remainder. Okay. So, if I have 10, Mm -hmm. And you modulus four, you know, you go four, you know, goes into two fours is an eight, and then you have a two left over, so it'll hand you a two. Okay. So a four modulus 16, or 16 modulus four, is a zero, because it comes out perfectly. Yeah. Okay. So um, the modulus is the percent sign, and uh, so... In uh, line six, enter. Um, we'll say var seconds equals. Um, actually, we should probably do millis first. Yeah, do 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 millis. Milliseconds or yeah, whatever. Your variable name, name it how you want. Um, date, space, percent, 1,000, space, space? 1,000, yeah. Why? Why space? Why 1,000? Uh, because this whole thing is in, uh, um, milliseconds. Oh. Okay. So if we have the millis, um, that will, actually I wonder if this is the right way to do this. 
a way to do it. I don't know. I might be wrong. Um, so we're getting modulus a thousand. That should give us, you know, a nice chunk of zero to ninety nine in milliseconds. Does that make sense? No. So if I have say a number, okay, ten thousand, ten thousand and twenty one, okay, and I mod by a thousand. Basically, everything above a thousand mm -hmm. just goes away, right? Because a thousand, divis like dividing a thousand into fifteen thousand is always going to be zero. Okay. So it's everything from this point on this kind of arbitrary, you know, third digit. So you're just this way. Twenty-one. Yeah. Why do you want twenty-one though? Because we have a big, long list. We have a, a huge number that is the milliseconds between this point in time mm -hmm. and the wedding date. Okay. So this is how many milliseconds has to pass in, in the world for us to hit September 22nd, 2020. Okay, but why do we want... Okay, never mind. Keep, keep explaining. So we, we don't want it in milliseconds. So if we modify a thousand, we're removing milliseconds from the number, okay. and that's giving us. Well, this is we we have to do more math, but this is like saying, I want the milliseconds out. Okay. So is that crazy? No, I don't really care about milliseconds. I don't care how many milliseconds there are. <laughs> well then. Like, I thought I was important. You are, but I'm not counting the milliseconds, baby. I can't count that high. I'm Oof. going insane. You'd, you'd marry a crazy person. Oof. Just saying. I don't expect you to start counting milliseconds. Please don't. But it's, it it's suck. You do nothing but count milliseconds. Now they're then. Moving on. Um, I think I'm funny. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> Um, Somebody has to. <laughs> we're going to do some more math things. Uh, so basically what you're saying is by putting this in, we're just chopping off the milliseconds off right. of that time. And forcing but it to display not, in seconds or what? Right now we're setting a variable to how many milliseconds specifically out of that big long number mm -hmm. like we're not we don't care about hours we don't care about days we don't we all that thing cares about is how many milliseconds between zero and 99 and that's what's displaying right, right there well no that so that there is all the milliseconds from now until then all yes. of them right yes so we this is just saying i want the the actual milliseconds Anything that's bigger than a millisecond, a, a, i.e. a second or a minute or an hour, okay. I don't care about. That's not my job. So we're asking it to only display milliseconds? I'm yes! Sorry. That's where we're starting. It I makes the sense in the math. Getting rid of milliseconds. We will if you want. We have that's to deal with so milliseconds confused. no matter what. I'm okay with that, but I just didn't understand what our goal was here. Our goal is to have a, like... You know, days, hours, minutes, seconds, and apparently, optionally, milliseconds. I thought we were trying to get rid of them. I thought that was the whole point of this, was removing milliseconds. Here I find out we're trying to display milliseconds. We have to remove just... milliseconds. Okay. I, I'm just really confused about <laughs> what I'm doing. So, do a variable above that. We'll call this var temp date. One word? Yep. All the variables have to be one word. And you don't have to set it equal to, or you could just say equals date. Is that cool. what you're saying? Yeah. And then change your date to temp date on line eight. So we're doing everything on the same variable. Okay. So on the next line, line nine, we'll you probably want to hit a few like enters and get that return to like get some space because we're gonna be doing a number of these. Okay. So
So, uh, tab, no, down, tab, um, temp date equals temp date space divided by 1000. So that, uh, and then on line 13 remove, uh, or 14, return temp date instead of date. Mm. JK, that's a terrible idea. Um, now's probably a good time to do string concatenation, which is a big long word. Um, so instead of the variable date, we're going to return, um, we'll do the quotes, millis. Millis or millis, the uh, millisecond up Just, above. this is a tag, so whatever you want it to look like. What do you mean a tag? Uh, so close the thing, plus, space plus, I'm just hitting buttons now. Yeah, milliseconds. Okay, then remove the date thing. So what we're doing is we're returning. Oh, now you done screwed it up. Yeah. What Delete. Happened? Backspace, backspace. You brought that new line over. Keep going. Go again. Go again. Now enter. Nope. <laughs> Ansi. Hi. Uh, enter. Damn it. Okay, back Can space. I not just control Z all the shit? Yeah, I guess. Oh, too far. There you go. Perfect. So. Hi. Save. If we go back to the page. Oh, this page? Yep. Refresh. That's going to give you a thing. Millie. Yep. Oh, no. So, what you're probably going to want to do mm. is go back to the code. Capitalize your M in your quotes. And then. For prettiness? Prettiness, but then put like an S colon space afterwards. Right there? Yep. And the colon is. Yep. So what we have here is a string, which is millis colon space. And we are adding milliseconds, the value of milliseconds, to that string. And because we're returning this function, it's coming out and saying, I want you to set the HTML to this. So we go back to the thing, refresh, woo! Go team fun. So what is this 155 that it's displaying? That is the current amount of milliseconds we have to wait till we get married. Not including seconds, minutes, hours, or days. So it's just the milliseconds. Yep. That makes more sense why you're getting this random remainder. I didn't understand how the remainder made sense. So we can go back to the code, and we're going to do that like three more times. Oh. Um, so fun. So let's, let's do this. Um, instead of writing like hours, minutes, days, whatever, mm -hmm. we'll just, I think the, the gold standard is like, days colon hours colon minutes colon seconds dot millis so um change your millis to just a dot so the whole string this whole thing is just yep. a period yep and without the space okay so that's milliseconds so we set temp date to temp date divided by a thousand that got the milliseconds out of that right because we just took it away mm -hmm. so now we need seconds okay. so we can do a var seconds equals temp date 
modulus. No, the or it's percentage. That's, I'm just pushing buttons. Okay. How many? How many uh, seconds are in a a time? How many seconds in a time? Yeah. How many seconds in a minute? You're right. Let's put down 60. <laughs> so concerned. Okay. And we're going to do the temp date. Mm -hmm. So we the, the modulus isn't affecting temp date. It's just grabbing it from temp date. And then we strip off the next set. Like that? Yep. So we can do the same thing with minutes. Are we doing any returns? or? So we're going... We'll, uh, you could put the seconds before. Actually, you could probably do like a colon and then plus seconds, but. So, seconds. Plus? Uh, we need a plus? Do we? I don't know. If Let's we're find going out. to add it together. <laughs> Did it break it? Yeah. So, you have to tell it that seconds is being added to that string. Yeah? Yep. Why are there two periods? Uh, because we're doing uh, the bad maths. Bad maths? Bad maths. Uh, also quick maths? Yeah, or so... This, this division is uh, giving us a big-ass floating point number. Um, so oh, what we need to do is we need to force it to be a whole number, which is, a, which is an integer. So we're going to call a function called parse int. So wait, what? Is it doing that because it's too big, or what's happening? Why are we forcing it to be an integer? Why is it not already an integer? So I Wouldn't have the number of minutes between now and then. So if I have a number, mm -hmm. uh, one thousand two hundred thirty. If I do the thing, you get two hundred thirty. If you divide one thousand two hundred thirty by a thousand, it's one. Remainder two hundred thirty. Right, which is like one point two three. Okay. Wouldn't. We need to make sure that it doesn't have, it's a whole number, whatever the next whole number is, right? We don't want anything beyond that. So we can use something called parse int, which um, float, floating point number is any like, you know, five point something, or, you know, if it has a, a decimal, that's a float, or there's number, another, mm -hmm. a number of other things they're called, whereas like one, two, three, four are your, you know, natural numbers. Okay, so what I'm concerned, like, confused about, um, with the milliseconds, we mm -hmm. were trying to get the remainder. Mm -hmm. With the seconds, we're trying to remove the remainder? No, we're also getting the remainder. Okay. We're just getting it, uh, so, so, we're getting the remainder two times, because remember this, this, uh, String is all of the milliseconds between this point in time and our marriage, right? Mm -hmm. So if we say, "Hey, take all that num that that number, divide it by a thousand," that's how many seconds there are because we just converted from milliseconds to seconds, right? Mm -hmm. We can take that number, divide it by you know sixty. Mm -hmm. We take those seconds, convert it to minutes. Sixty again, seconds to or minutes to hours. Divide it by 24 hours to days. Like we're just taking this number and slowly chopping it up and dividing it into our different units of time that we use as people. That makes sense. Does it? <laughs> right up until you start explaining it again a different way and then I'm confused again. <laughs> okay. So okay. on line 9 and 11, okay. we need to wrap the... Uh, temp date divided by stuff mm -hmm. with a 
function called parse int. P -A -R -P -A -R -S -E, capital I N T and then curvy boy. And then you need to wrap those things. Perfect. And then do the same thing for line 11. Right there. Yep. So what this is going to do is make sure that we don't have any, uh, any of the weirdness that we were having. So if we go back, it should just be happier numbers. Cool. Two, one, zero, 59, 58. Woo! Just counting down seconds. Yep. So now we can do the same thing for minutes, hours, days. So we go back to the code. So what's the 282? That's how many milliseconds. But it's just, okay. I will we'll, we'll, make it's a it hanging prettier. milliseconds. Yeah, because okay. we're only calling that function every hundred milliseconds. We'll fix okay. that. I'll make I'll make you happier about that. Okay, so now we're doing uh, minutes. Okay. All right. Do you know what is a little bit ridiculous? How long it took me to figure out how to spell minutes? Because every time I'd spell minutes, I'd read it as minutes. Be convinced I was spelling minutes wrong, and then have to go look up how to spell minutes, and then be confused because I was reading my notes again, and then be sure that it was all in my head. Turns out, I spelled them the same. Yeah. It's rude. Welcome to English. I'll take your sanity now. <sighs> okay. Temp date. Yeah. Alright, and 60. Yeah, that's how many seconds are in a minute, I believe. Equals parse? Uh, yep. Because we have to strip that away from the temp date. Yeah. Yep. And then that's not going to do anything. Because you're not. So I didn't bring it to here. It. Yep. Does that look okay? Go. Does it look what? Just go to your page. What did I do wrong? Go to your page. You're adding your seconds and your minutes together. So you don't want to actually add them together because, okay. like, I just want it to display together. How do I right. tell it display together? Don't actual. I mean, you could string cast them, but you also probably want to put a colon between them anyways. You're saying string cast as in put that parentheses in between and put something between them? Is that what you're saying? Uh, so it's adding a string in between? Yeah, that's not string cast, but yes, that's what I'm saying to do. Oh, okay. All right. Uh. <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> I, I guess he didn't you didn't quite understand. Plus? Yes. Do I need to have the, the comma in between two pluses? No, no. Okay. The comma is <sighs> for separation. You're not separating, right? I'm not, what do you mean? You're not, you're not trying to separate minutes and, from seconds, right? I mean, I don't want to add them together. <laughs> What do you mean by separate? Okay, go. What is this? <laughs> okay, what what have I done? What does this mean? Okay, so JavaScript is special. It will do whatever you ask it to do. Okay. Oh, good. Like it is. It'll take me literally. Yeah, it, it will take you very literally. Okay. Uh. So. What you're saying is I have some minutes. Uh -huh. I want to add them to my seconds. Okay. I then want to add it to a string of a dot. Uh-huh. And I want to add that string to milliseconds. Okay. We can force minutes and seconds to be a string. 
Okay. But we don't need to because you probably want to put a colon in between your minutes and your seconds using the string pluses. A colon in. Just for displaying to make it pretty because oh. hours, days, okay. colon, hours, colon, minutes. Like a, like, like a digital clock yeah. would just, okay. I see what you mean. So, I need a plus on either side of this. And then I need these boys. And then I need. Yes, and remove the comma. <laughs> Why did I put it there to begin I don't know. <laughs> did I hear colon and think comma? Probably. Probably. That sounds like something I would do. Okay. Yay! <laughs> we did a thing. Was that painful enough? <laughs> I enjoyed it. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Ours? Yep. That is usually the next agreed upon unit of time. Team date. I really like those A's. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask questions. <sighs> no. Right. Is, is there 60 hours in a day? Or wait, wait, wait a second. Uh, 60. Okay, you're right. You're right. 60 seconds in a minute. 60 minutes. 60 minutes an hour. You're right. Everything's fine. Math is hard. Math is very hard. It's especially hard after a long day. And day. your fiance is... <laughs> Man. Tempting. What am I doing? And then down here we do the same thing. Yep. Seconds, seconds, minutes, hours. I'm too tired. Oh, yeah. This. No, that's fine. Is it? Yeah, because we we need to do the hours, today's, and things. So. Okay. Okay. Everything is fine. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. What? Actually, I'm not convinced this is gonna work. Let's continue down the path. Blindly. Blindly? Have to fix it later? Yeah. I'm sure it's like really obvious to whoever's not watching this right now. Yeah, for sure. But I'm too tired. Uh, how many hours in a day? Are we sure that this is correct given that our 60 seconds was not correct? Shh. May, may or may not have been correct. Technically speaking, you, I don't think you have to do that one unless we want to have like months or something else. Because we could just say it's this many days. Does that make sense? No. So, so temp date, the reason that we're doing the parsint and everything is so that we can, uh, so that we can save the, the pulling out of that thing. And because so if days is our last thing. thing, we don't have to do it for the next one. Does that make sense? Um, kind of, yeah. Okay, save. Like I said, I think it might be broken. Four. Four days, 29, wait. Yeah, four days and 29 hours. Okay. Four uh, seconds. Go, go back. Something's wrong. Okay, wait. 
That's milliseconds, seconds, yeah. minutes. Okay, four yeah. minutes. I missed minutes. And then I don't know why we have 29 hours, and then I also don't know why we have four days. So, uh, let's see. Uh, temp date is that. That divided by that. Seconds. Okay, new plan. Uh, so each time it's pulling from what we did before, right? So this right, that's why I was saying you did this one. So it should yeah. still be moving along. Milliseconds to seconds, seconds to hours. Your hours to sorry, seconds to minutes, minutes to hours, hours to days. Like there's mathematical equations and and symbols floating around my brain right now in the spaces of my head. Mm. Like this big look on my face. I needed a cup of coffee today. I've needed a cup of coffee all day, but it's been one of those days where you need a cup of coffee so bad that you can't remember to make yourself a cup of coffee. That's how bad you needed them. Oof. Um, By the way, why does this say IT? IT? Uh, I don't know. It. Let's start logging. Welcome to debugging 101. When you don't have your debugger actually set up, use console.log. that not changing all oh, because there's seconds so this should theoretically change right now yep cool so this is everything in seconds everything okay um so why the hell about it but here we are um, minutes. minutes the same so many years so many years that messed with me Okay, so we have seconds, which is this number and this big number. Minutes, which is this. Uh, okay, stop. Minutes is one with eight O. Oh. I feel like that. Eight thousand nine hundred and nine minutes. Yeah, but it hasn't r run back over below the zero scroll down yeah but it's still 8,909 minutes that's a hundred hours like that's the right math is this right 53 4 5 4 0 uh, Seconds, temp date, minutes, temp date.
Seconds to days. Six days. So, I think this is actually working correctly. Okay. Ish. Why do we have 28 hours? Um... Oh. Wait a minute. Shh, balls. Son of a nutcracker. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, we have a... Uh... Wait. Is that right? Seconds is... Correct. So we have... 60 seconds in a minute. We have 60 minutes in an hour. This one is 24 hours in a day. And then, yeah. So we're, we're going the, the best backwards way. Hmm. So instead of, um, it's a thousand, we're, we're basically taking the next thing. So it's a thousand seconds is a millisec is a second. A thousand milliseconds is a second. Sixty seconds is a minute. Sixty minutes is an hour. We were doing sixty hours as a day. So if we had sixty hour days, that would be correct. Okay. Uh yeah. Logical oof. And then days is actually just whatever the leftover is. Okay. So if we do that, save, go back refresh oh it just worked cool 371 days 4 hours 58 minutes and 20, 20 seconds and then what we can do is come here we're gonna make this like 20 millisecond callback time so ready for this intense Super intense. That's actually kind of mind wiggling. Mind wiggling? Yes, my eyes are wiggling. Okay. Um, we should get rid of those milliseconds. They're kind of terrifying me. Oof. I'm sorry. We don't have to, like, fully just don't display them. So, we're going to do something called a comment okay. here. If you. So, a comment is remember the don't read this code thing. Mm -hmm. In JavaScript, it's a slash, slash, well, there's a number of ways to do it, but slash, slash comments the line. You do it at the beginning of the line. So, if you go beginning, slash, slash, we have to leave the parsint in there because that's getting our, our milliseconds out. Mm -hmm. You can also hold control slash. And that will do, even if you're on the end of the line, it'll do at the beginning of the line. Is text editor. So if you save that, go back, it's gonna be mad. Yeah, because we're not using milliseconds. So go back. Oh, because we mm -hmm. told it to down here. Yep. Where's my little. Hey, you missed it. It's down there. If you click this, it will make it easier for you. So remove just everything after seconds, honestly. Okay, save. Cool. So let's do a couple other small optimizations and call that the stream. Um, okay, so in 21 through like 24, okay. we set a bunch of variables. We actually have really no need to. Okay. Um, so what we can do is take the whole new date little declaration there on line 21. This? Mm -hmm. uh, cut that. All of it? Including the... Uh, no. That? Yeah. Double click on the today on line 22. Paste. Okay, and then you can copy that down to wedding date. The whole thing? Or? Just, yeah, so the wedding date minus new date. Stick that in the epoch to date. Okay. 
there. Just mm -hmm. replace this. Mm -hmm. And then you can take the epoch to date to the end of the line and replace formatted date. Now you can delete lines 21, 22, and 23. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So what that's doing is if you scroll over, just take this and drag it that way. Yeah, you don't need to see any of that crap. So what, what, what you're doing, you know, order of operations, um, basically start with your insides first. What you're saying is, I need a new date. Mm -hmm. Cool, here's your new date. I'm going to take wedding date, which we defined up there. We technically could stick that in here, but that doesn't seem like a good design decision. We're going to minus those two. Whatever that is, we're going to pass in to the epoch to date function, which is going to do some stuff with that. Okay. And then when it's done, it's going to return it back. And because of this equal signs, whatever this function returns is going to set the document inner HTML. Okay. So if you go back to the page, you'll actually see we have a uh, refresh. We have the same thing with one line of code instead of four, which, uh, I mean, arguably you don't want to try to stuff all the lines of code into one. Um, not even arguably, like don't try to overstuff like lots of logic into one line of code, uh, but also functional programming like that where instead of trying to make a variable for every single thing and just try to hand like don't don't say here's my you know here's my deck of cards i have an a a b and a c okay here's a you're gonna you know whatever you hand me back i'm gonna write down on a and then i'm gonna tell to the next person i'm just gonna say hey here's you know once you're done tell that person and then they're gonna you know go off right so there's none of this kind of weird yeah um, let's change our colors real quick. If you go to your next tab on the browser. Uh, yep. So if you grab that little, yep, copy, you should probably get used to more of the keyboard shortcuts eventually. Um, so title. Instead of cyan, line 16. On this? So, so double click, and then hashtag paste. Boom. So that is that color. Save. Go back and then grab the purple. Yep. Okay. Did I? Does that do it? Yep. Okay. And Which then one? the header background color line 10. You can just put it right there. Save. Go back. Next one? No, I think that's you good for now. It? Yeah. Cool. Um, let's add some padding or margin somewhere to make it a little prettier. Okay. So go um, Oh, get rid of line 11. That's probably screwing it up. Because that was like a th thing I was kind of talking about, and then I guess we saved it. Hey! <laughs> Hi. Should we Woo! get rid of this button? Yeah, let's get rid of that. Okay. Let's see. Where is our button? Um, it will be line 36. Um... Get rid of all of those. Uh, and the next one. Yep, right there. Do I need that div ID demo? What is that? The, so that is what we're setting when we mess with things. One of the things we could do, here, let's hurry and do this real quick. Let's, uh, so leave the div there, but copy the ID equals demo. Or cut it out of there. Right there? Mm-hmm. Okay. So instead of having this tiny little thing that's not like displaying to the world that we're getting married in this amount of time, uh, go inside of that div on line 36 and add an h1 uh, tag. Nope. 
inside the div, not in. It's a yeah child element. Okay, space, and then you're gonna make that the uh, your ID. So go. Nope, it's a attribute. You mean inside it? Uh, you need to be more specific about what inside means. Inside the inside. Yes. Right, right there? Space. That is an attribute. Okay. Whereas h1 is a child of div. Also, you should uh, get rid of the extra line on 38 because OCD. So that, that opens and closes together? Yeah. It's inside of it? Well, what, what this kind of shows is that this thing doesn't have any children. Like, okay. just in case you're wondering. So if you save that, we go back, and it should be big boy. And it's blue. Yeah, it must be. Oh, yeah. Uh, we could make that uh, oh, go back to the color. Oh, because we told H1 to be blue, huh? Yeah, but if we go get one of our other wedding colors, we could uh, oh, okay. We could make it one of those colors. This one? Uh, or this one? Uh, I mean, I feel like the black one is the only one you're going to be able to read worth anything. But we could do, like, a yellow with the black background if you wanted. So, I'm okay, with just black. okay, then just change it on there. Hmm, well, that's what I intended to do. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you did not do the thing that you thought you were doing. What You're did not I do? Selected anymore. <laughs> Everything is fine. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you should probably does. really get like used to using your keyboard sh shortcuts and not having to look at them every second. It was the freaking hashtag that threw me off. I accidentally hit control instead of shift when I was <laughs> trying to do that hashtag, okay? That's what happened. I was I'm flustered because people That's are fine. watching me. That's fine. Just ah. save it. And by people, there's two people. By, and one of them is you, your dad. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Hi. Hi. Cool. We did a thing. We did a thing. So I think it sounds like that's a good stopping point. <laughs> With the more JavaScript, and then we'll probably do. Why is this thing so weird? Uh, that was the your escapades of <laughs> button pushing. I don't even know what that is. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Probably Control F three or whatever the hell. Uh, probably. I wonder. I don't know. P pending. We may go into React slash Angular next time. We need to make a better design decision on whether or not we're doing one of those. Heck, maybe uh, we'll go through and do, actually it's probably a good idea to go through and do some research just on stream to come up with that. So that's probably where we'll end up next time. Um, but as we get into like React and Angular, just remember that the only thing that they're doing is what this is, but smarter. Like we, we talk about grabbing this element and setting stuff and you know, fundamentally all it's doing is messing with the HTML and messing with the CSS via JavaScript. But there's big overarching like architectural ideas and decisions around what's going on. So yeah, that's a kind of different problem.